to say that I told you so because I did what did I say this Falcons defense will make the Jets offense look like a superstar and what happened you let Geno Smith a rookie QB look like a 10-year veteran you let him throw to receivers who I don't even know the fucking names of Okay, this is just like last week with the Patriots coming into town. You got guys that pulled out of the sewers, and they had monster days, and they made this defense look, you know, ridiculous. But, I mean, God. That's just unbelievable. The problem, I mean, again... Again, it's the same song and dance. It's just the same shit over and over. But for a different reason this time. And this time, it was the fucking inept coaching of Mike Smith and his dumbass decision to go for it on fourth and one at the end of the second quarter. You're down by 10. Okay, it's 17 to 7. What the fuck is wrong? With taking the points. Huh? What's wrong with taking points? Why would you risk going for it and not getting in, which is what happened, again, but that stems from, but let me finish my point here. What's wrong with being down by one position rather than by two? Touchdown's not going to do you anything. You're still going to be down by a possession. Why not go for a field goal? You can at least, by then, you'll still be down by one possession. You've been doing fairly well in the red zone. Surprisingly, they did really well in the red zone. Aside from that one gaffe in the second quarter, which turned out to be the difference of the game. You're down 17-10. What's wrong with that? Why can't you take points? I don't see... There seems to be some sort of culminating stupid-ass decision-making that goes on with the NFL coaches in when it comes down to going for it on fourth down. Okay? The only reason why you would do it is if you're either Peyton Manning, you're Drew Brees, you're Aaron Rodgers, a.k.a. you're an elite quarterback with stacked team, okay? We could do that if we devised a package that was preferable to Matt Ryan. You have, this, you have these playmakers, and yet you want to run with Jacquiz Rodgers. Are you fucking dumb? Like, what is... What, where did you get this idea from? Jacquiz is not a power back. He's not a guy that can run through and gain your, he's not that type of back. He's a change of pace back. He's a back that you bring in after you've ran Jason Stelling for like two or three times. You want, you want speed and quickness or a screenplay. But you don't use him for a fucking fourth and one. That's not his, that's not his forte. That's not his forte. So just stupid ass decision making cost this game. We would be down 17 to 10 rather than 17 to 7. The offense was looking fairly good. You know, we were scoring when it mattered in the red zone. And there you go in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, it would have been 31 to 27 when Matt Ryan threw the touchdown to Tula la 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 or whatever the hell you call him. Tuya to, to Bababada. It would have been 31 to 27. That way you would have to force Juno Smith to go to a whole field, although. Pfft, I mean, to be quite honest, the way he was looking in the fourth quarter, that probably would have happened. But still, you have to put him under the pressure of him needing a touchdown and not just settling for field goal yardage. It's just small inconsistencies that plague this team. Stupid-ass decisions and fucking dumb-ass play calling that put this team in a one and 4 hole. Because this is, this is the same shit that could have been done in the Patriots game. We could have, I don't understand Mike Smith's, you know, logical thinking. We couldn't even go for it. We didn't make it on um, fourth and one when we played the Patriots. And so he's thinking to himself, well, hmm, let's, just, let's just try it again. 
you, I mean, I would, I would not be upset with the play call had it been you use Jason Snelling or you spread the receivers out, you know, five wide set and let Matt Ryan throw the ball. You get some one-on-one -on -one coverage. Or maybe you do like a, a draw play, spread the field out, Matt, let Matt Ryan, you know, take it in and then run it in for himself. You could have done anything and I would have been okay with that play. You make Jason, you make Jacquez Rogers run on a fourth and one when you set up the package in such a way where it is, I mean, you know it's going to be running. It's just, it's fucking dumb shit. I mean, seriously. This was the first week, this is the first time that the, pl that the plays, that the offense looked pretty decent in the red zone. They went four for five. I'll take that, okay? Minus that one gaff of them, you know, screwing it up in the, you know, in the in the second quarter. But they did fairly well. But again, you got to blame it on the coaching staff. This fucking dumbass Jacksonville reject coaching staff just decides to, you know, bring down the talent that's with them. And now we got Waffle House Jones. He's closed for the season. I would have been... I would have been somewhat, I would have had a little bit of an easier feeling with us being two and three with Julio Jones out. I would have been a little bit better. But now that it's one and four and our number one receiver is down, huh. my, you know what, this might, what I would love for the Falcons to do, I know they're not going to do it, but uh, what I would love for them to do is just tank the season. Tank the season. Go two and twelve or two and fourteen, just fucking give up, okay? Because this shit's over. All right, it doesn't matter. There's absolutely no way. And if they do do somehow decide to turn on the Jets, huh, yeah, and go eleven and zero, and make it twelve and four, and s make it to the playoffs, then pff, by all means, kudos. But if you really want longevity for the future, you got to get a new offensive line. New offensive line, new coaching staff. Get rid of Mike Smith. He's done. No more. No more. Because we could have easily been 4-1, or, you know, we could have easily been 5-0 and and lost Julio Jones, and that would have been okay. But because of this inept play calling, these stupid-ass decisions by uh, Mike Smith, and, and, and Nolan and you know Dirk Cutter, just it's, it's it's over, it's over, okay. You can't. There's nothing you can salvage from the season. The only person I feel bad for is Tony Gonzalez. I mean, what can you say about this guy? This guy is determined to win. Says, you know what? I'm coming out of retirement. Let's win a ring for me, okay? He says, screw the Falcons. I want to win. A, I want to win a ring. Okay, I want a ring. And this is how Mike Smith and the coaching staff thank him by going one and four. What has this guy not done? This guy has done everything you have asked for. He has blocked. He has made some, I mean, just it's stupid catches. He's been a leader. I mean, he's been a motivating factor for every other tight end in the game. And this is how you thank him by making dumbass decisions. By making Jacquez Rogers run on a fourth and one, by not going for it, not t taking the points, and, k and being down by one possession rather than two, and then you got a fucking ugly defense. Okay, a, a, just a defense that I would have been. I know we, people want to say we have rookies, okay, but who the fuck are these receivers? Who's Belial Powell? Who's Geno Smith? Who are these players? How did they beat us? How did they beat a defense with so much veterans, aside from the corners? You've got Trufant and Alfred. Or whatever his name is, Robert Alfred, or something like that. How? How do you not, I mean, how are, how is Asante Samuel not saying, hey, you should do this, or hey, you should do that? These mentors, these guys are not playing. Teach them. What is the problem? What is going on? It, it just drives me crazy with the talent this team has. 
You're fucking just shitting it all over the place. It's just, it's, it's, it's dumbfounding is what it is. It's very, it's just, it's, I'm still shocked. I'm still shocked. I could handle a loss to the Patriots. Not really. I couldn't even fucking that. I can't even handle a loss to the Patriots. Now I can, now you, we lose to even, Mike Smith, what are you doing? Thank God there's a bye week. I'm fucking sick and tired of watching this team. This team, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of turning on the fucking television and seeing this team being down 10 points, 14 points to no-name people. I can understand losing to the, to the Saints. Like I said before in that first video, I was not surprised that we lost by them because that was the first game of the season. And it was the, you know, Sean Payton was back. We did a really good job. Our defense did a pretty good job of containing them because now they're on a fucking... I think it also had to cultivate with the fact that this was the first time Payton was back. So they're still trying... The, the plays were a little rusty, but we still made it some somewhat of the game. And then just like a roller coaster, just fucking tanked. Just, just despicable, man. That movie should be called Despicable Falcons and just play play the Falcon season. You want to watch a fucking comedy of a movie? Go to whatever movie theater you are. Ask for Despicable Falcons Sunday at 1 o'clock or 8 o'clock, whatever primetime game it is, and sit there with your tub of popcorn and your Coke and laugh maniacally at this team and let them and, sh and just watch how they fucking crumble. They just implode. They implode within. It's, it's just, it's, it's hilarious to see this team play the way it does with the talent that we have. And now that Julio Jones is gone, who do we have? I mean, now we got Tony Gonzalez, a tight end is going to lead our receptions. It's, it's like Tony Gonzalez went from the great team, like a Falcons, he's gone, gone back to a Kansas City team, like what he was before. It's like he's playing on Kansas City back when, we, when he was in Kansas City in the 90s and the, in the early 2000s. I feel so bad for this guy. I really do. But again, you want a comedy fest? Grab some popcorn, turn on the Falcons, and watch this team just, just, just fucking, just watch Mike Smith, the bald eagle, make some stupid decisions, go for it on fourth and one, dumbass play calls, Run the ball with Jacquez Rogers. It's, it'll be nominated for an Oscar. Or an Emmy, or whatever the hell you want to call it. A Tony, even. You can put, like, a little musical in the background. Put the Benny Hill soundtrack. Boom, you've got a Tony. I mean... <laughs> it's just... It's... It's something. This season, you think the Falcons... You think this team can't... You say they can't lose to the Jets. They prove you wrong. They prove you wrong. It's it's hilarious, is what it is. Ah, oh, so who do we have now? We have Harry Douglas, Tony Gonzalez, and Roddy White as our wide receivers. We got an offensive line that can't do shit, can't block, can't protect anybody. Matt Ryan looked like he was in a fucking I don't even know. Looks like he was being thrown in a coliseum. Got fucking everyone all over him. Can't get a second to do anything. And Julio Jones just tries his damnedest. And, you know, unfortunately, injuries happen. And again, you know, I guess you can say injuries have been... I mean, this has just been a bug this year. The Falcons caught it. I mean, if it were fourth and one and you ran with Steven Jackson, I can understand that. But Jack Wiz is no Jackson. Snelling is no Jackson. You've got to alter your game plan. You can't just consider that these players are just as good as other players. You can't do that. Jack Wiz is not a, a Steven Jackson. He's a guy you can do like a nice little screen to. He's, a, he's got the characteristics of a Jackson, which he can catch some passes. He's got a little flash. But he's nowhere near as durable and as tough as Steven Jackson is. He's a guy who, you know, fourth and one, you run it with him, he'll get you in. But we don't have him. 
yet. Not until week seven. And that's when we play Tampa Bay. And oh my god. <laughs> that's going to be a laughter. Because who the fuck does Tampa Bay have? Huh? They have Darrell Rivas. Oh, Doug Martin. Oh, God. Oh, man, he's going to have a field day against us. And some quarterback that I don't even know. That doesn't happen for two weeks. So thankfully, we can prep for that game. Although, at this point, you know, any game is just... Any game at this point is a loss. And we still have to play against the Packers, Saints... 49ers, and Seahawks. Ooh. Boy, this is not going to be a good season. Well, I mean, the season's already over, so what does that matter, right? But again, you know, Falcons fans, it was a good season for a day of one month. It was a great, it was a hell of a ride, I'll tell you that. Um, hopefully next year, because I'm already calling, put, in the, put in the nail in my coffin, and it's fucking over. Hopefully next year, we can get in a, a good coaching staff. Mike Smith, I mean, listen, you did a good, you did a, you did somewhat of a good job your first couple seasons, but then at this point, it's just your play calling and your decision making has just been horrendous. Plus the fact that you suck balls in the uh, playoffs—that's another thing too. Okay, you get obliterated. You get obliterated. God, I don't even know. If, you can even call it obliterated because you get just you don't even let you don't even make the Packers punt when you have home field advantage the first time. And then and then when you go to New York uh, New York you must have two points. Whoa, whoa look at that offense roll. And then you and then for some reason and then the whole trend of blowing leads and not sustaining a lead. Huh. Matt Ryan, he lived up to his name somewhat. He had ice in his veins. Came back and put the team up by one. But those three points right there cost the team. So if you want a mantra for the season, it's Mike Smith and his dumbass decision making.